We're here once again, Ghana Weekend TV. This is where we serve you quality entertainment content. My name is Kwame Dazi, and today I'm here with a multi-talented creative. He is a filmmaker. He is a director. He is an actor. He is a musician. Pascal Aka. Bro, how are you? Sorry. Charlie, good. you know, sometimes, you know, when, when I'm mentioning your accolades, uh, what you do in the creative industry, I'm like, wow, this guy is blessed. You do almost everything. And the latest discovery from you is that you are a musician. No, no, I'm shocked. I mean, I mean, since when? Since when did you add music to all these things? Uh, well, it's something that people are not known about. It's just that it's, I do it all, but people know me for one thing more than the other. Um, but the music thing, I've been doing it, uh, actually, I would say before I went to film school or um, I started pursuing directing like uh, full time. Um, but as a teenager, I used to do it all, act on stage, rap, uh, learn how to make music. Wow. And then, and then huh, okay, let me tell you the story, okay? Okay, you, we, we, we will get down to the story okay. proper. Ghana Weekend TV, subscribe to this channel and also read our stories on ghanaweekend.com. But I want us to take it one step, you know, a step after the other. Yeah. Because this gentleman here has paid his dues in the creative art industry right here in Ghana, in the film industry. Um, recently in May, he won the best soundtrack for the film Gold Coast Lounge, uh, the AMVCA is the Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards in Nigeria. I was there with him and it was, it was a sight to behold, you know. He was awarded one million naira. Plenty money, yeah. <laughs> like, like that's like eighteen thousand. Then I said it's something. Like I, that. I don't remember the conversion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it was, it was a very good feeling at that time when you know we went and we were expecting our people to win. And yeah, Pascal was on stage to collect that particular award. And so um, he has play, uh, played so many roles in the creative arts industry. He acted or played a role in Gold Coast Lounge as well. The main, you were the main character, right? No, I won't say the main character. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm in the side somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Now, so sometimes we get confused. Pascal Aka, I know him to be a Ghanaian creative, a Ghanaian filmmaker, but I look him up on the internet and tell me he's. Ivorian, stayed in Canada. Now my hair confused. Uh, where, where are you from? Okay. Here's the thing. Well, I'm West African. Yo, good. Okay. But we have claimed you. Sure. I have a Ghanaian passport as we speak. No, no, we have claimed you. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I, I think by now at this point, I've been a Ghanaian creative more yeah. than a Canadian creative. Good. Um, and I did, at this point, I stayed, or definitely, I stayed in Ghana much longer than I stayed in uh, Ivory Coast or, uh, or, or Canada. Okay. So, uh, and this is my 10th year anniversary of being wow. uh, the director in, in Ghana. So, wow. so yeah, yeah. So, I'm so, so you were born in Ivory Coast? I'm born in Ivory Coast. Um, my, my father was Ivorian and then we moved to Ghana. And okay. even when I was in Ghana, I was in a French school for years, many years. And then I transitioned to uh, to English. By the time I was like 11, 12 years old. Okay. Yeah, that's when I learned how to speak English. All <laughs> right, but you still speak French? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, a lot of the acting roles that I get is based on the fact that I speak French. I'm bilingual. Yeah. Wow! Yes. Wow! Wow! So, at what point in time did you realize that you have the interest, you have the talent for filmmaking? Uh, I think I was four years old. Four? Yeah. I mean, I've been making films uh, since I was four, you know, um, so since I was little, I was just, after watching a film, I would yeah, just yeah. walk around and watch more films in my head, films that were never made. So I was doing that for many, many, many years until I was like maybe 14 years old. But in between, of course, always writing, always um, creating, um, always acting on stage. Um, yeah, I love creating. So in real life, I'm a really nice social person. I don't talk much, but give me a script, take me on stage. So you write, you act. I'm a writer, I'm a director, Direct. um, I'm a cinematographer, um, um, film, film professor. I teach, you know, as well. Um, I have a film degree, so I, I can teach. And um, music composer, I compose all the music for all my films. Um, did I mention the acting part? Yes, I did. I yes, did. you did. <laughs> now, so when you came to Ghana, okay, with your parents, uh, well, you moved here with your parents? Okay, the first time, yes. The, the first time. Yes. Okay, so at what point in time did you go back? Did you go to Canada? Um, at the age of 15, 16 there. 
Oh, really? Yeah, that's why I went to Canada. So I was there for about a decade, about 10 years there. Yeah. So um, so when I went to, to Canada, that's when I, you know, um, I, 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 I finished high school and then I went to film school. Okay. For four years and I started okay. my, my, my filmmaking career, making movies. I started with action movies. That was my niche. That was, that was how... That when was you my were roots. in Canada? Yes, when I was in Canada. Um, I did two uh, feature films, feature action films in Canada. And then around 2010 there, yeah. that's when I was like, let me try music videos and then boom. I was only meant to be here for a little bit, right? My father passed away. So that's when I came for the funeral to bury my father. And then I was like, let me try music videos. So I did one, I did two. And I won't lie to you, as soon as I met some guy called EL. Okay. Right? Um, I shot one music video for him. And then it exploded. Wait, which one was that? Uh, Obumo. Okay. But then to Obumo. Oh, nah. Yeah. So um, I directed that video. It exploded. And then I directed a second video for EL called yeah. Turn the Lights Down. And it's not the most popular song. But when that video came out, the entire industry kept asking, who is that guy? So as soon as I did that video, that is when everybody came. Mm -hmm. The D-Blacks came. Chairman Kwame's came. Uh, five Five. More EL videos. I uh, went to the point where we eventually we did Kalu, we did Vera, yeah. for, 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 uh, you know. So uh, it's a 10th year anniversary of all those videos. 2012, that was the year that I blew up wow. with, with music videos. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a good celebration. Why, have you stopped working on music videos? Now? Yes. yes. Why did you stop? Um, that was around 2017. Um, after I did Dogo Yaro and all those videos okay. with BVIP. Uh, I stopped because God told me to stop. <laughs> oh. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual person. Uh, I just listen to the spirits. Um, this is what I believe. I believe that God is a director, right? And He created me in His own image. So what I, I'm doing is His will. So um, music videos, I was meant to do it, but I was also meant to stop. I was meant to do this for, for, for a phase, and I meant to stop. I'm going to dedicate myself to the film industry only. Uh, because I, I believe in Ghana, I believe in Ghana, Ghana's creative. And when I started with music videos, when I did a music video stuff 10 years ago, it was me, Gio, Esi Hene, yeah. Big, uh, Big OJ. We were like, I, I call ourselves the four pillars of the music video industry. Um, I think we did a good job. And then now the music video industry has just exploded so well. And a lot of our students, so a lot of our protégés, people that looked up to us, are doing very well in the music video industry. Now there's so many directors right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing to watch. Was it lucrative? Yes. Of course it was lucrative. During, during your time, was it? Yeah, but now it's more, it's like maybe more 10 lucrative. times more lucrative than it was back then. Yes. But during my time, it was, was lucrative. It was lucrative. Yeah. I didn't leave because it wasn't lucrative. I was, I was getting paid. Um, sometimes I get tempted to go back, you know, but no, no, no. My uh, boss says no. <laughs> <laughs> they look at the times like, oh, one million dollars. Ten minutes later, oh, two million dollars. So money is like time, it's like nothing. You know what I mean? So me being in the music video industry for so many years, I've seen fine checks here and there, like basa basa. To me, it's work. Yeah. So you know, like, see a fine check, she wants to uh, do something with me. It's like, oh, whatever. And so what? You know what okay, I mean? so let's get back to the people who come to you to help them, the actors and Here's writers, the thing, and all that. Yeah. Um, help yourself. Okay. There's no, it's, it's, I think the internet has made people uh, giving people so many resources, but also make people lazy at the same time. Okay. Like I told you, like I told you, when the internet was fresh, I researched how to become an actor. So what's stopping all these people mm -hmm. from researching how to become better, at, at, how to join, how to be an actor? Here's a solution. Very simple. If you send me a message saying that you're an actor, please help me. First of all, you saying please help me, you already failed, because just like heaven, heaven helps those who help themselves, right? Okay. So even if I say please help me, let me click on your profile which is your website, basically, mm -hmm. and see how you have helped yourself and what is it over there that shows that you are an actor and you have a passion for acting. If I click on your profile, all I see is selfies, you joking around, all that stuff. What proves that you're an actor? Because if you're an aspiring musician, say, Pascal, I'm an aspiring musician, right? I click on your profile, at least you have some music there. Some music, yeah, some yeah. playing, some music. Yeah, videos. you're an underground musician. Yeah. So I see you have some stuff and I heard so many fantastic underground artists. But these actors, these people that say, uh, I have a passion for acting, Prove it. How? You have, you know how the camera? Yes, you do. You have one in your pocket. Yeah. 15 years ago, we used to just scrap around the city in Canada just to find an HD camera, just to rent one. And it was, it was difficult to get. Now everybody has an HD camera on their, on, on their pockets. 4K even. My phone can shoot a 4K. It's a Samsung A7. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's twice the quality. So shoot yourself, record yourself acting, practice uh, four times a week. You know what I mean? And showcase why, why I should take you seriously. You understand? And he said, now I think about acting as well or whatever. 
here's a free tip. It is a job. Yeah. And when you apply for a job, you don't hit somebody in their DMs. You don't say, what's up or what? No, mm -hmm. that means you're mm -hmm. not taking it seriously. You're insulting every other actor that I know that are working very hard. And, and, and you, know, you know what I'm saying? And by you, you're going to write to my DMs and write unprofessionally in my DMs. If you apply for a job, you send an email. You don't go to someone's DM, you send an email. Mm -hmm. So if you send me an email, one, I'll take you a little bit more seriously. And two, if you have video of you acting, I'll take you a little bit more seriously and send pictures of yourself, I'll take you a little bit more seriously. But only three or four people have done that in the past 11 years. You understand? In the past 11 years, I only received four the emails. Come, oh, I, I, and, some, and some of them are not even from Ghana, unfortunately. Whoa. You understand? So um, there's a story of this girl. She was she, she acted for Shirley. and yeah. She sent Shirley an email. Boom. And she was casted. Email. Whoa. Not DMs like all oh, these aspiring actors do. She did the right thing. Email. Because that's where our professional things are. Our bank statements are there. Yeah. Our contracts yeah. are there. And yeah. everything is there. That's the professional. And if not email, if a social media picked LinkedIn, at least that was more professional. You understand? Yeah. So, um, but the most important thing, it's not about what you have a passion for, it's about what you do. Okay. You understand? Okay. And if you record yourself acting four times a week, then I take you seriously. Okay. If you go to every single event, film mm -hmm. events, that's part of an actor's job, by the way, the networking. Then I'll take you more seriously because if you will say you're an actor, oh, I want to work, I always want to work with you. Really? If you always want to work with me, then how come you're not there at my premiere? Mm, you didn't introduce mm, yourself. Mm, you didn't show up. Mm. How come you're not there at this event? How come I did a seminar? You didn't show up. You know, all those things. And so when you do those things, I see your same faces like, okay, this guy's serious. And I don't have to search to find him. You're right there. Because let me give you an example as an actor. Mm -hmm. I'm an actor as well, right? Yeah. And I, mostly I used to act for the same director all the time. And that, that director's name is Pascal Aka. He's my favorite director. <laughs> now, but I got to a point where I was like, okay, let me act for other um, directors that, that I is, respect. Yeah. So let's say I want to act for Shirley, right? Yeah. Every time I have, I have a new project, I send her an email. I send her an email, link, boom. She can click, she can see that I'm working. So whether she casts me or not, she sees that I'm working. Yeah. Boom, I have an event. I give her a free ticket. She shows up, she watches a movie. Oh, Pascal, nice performance, cool. Nice one. That's it. She has an event. I am there. Cool. Next thing you know, I show up at the event and then her manager said, Pascal, meeting tomorrow. Meeting? What meeting? Eight o'clock. Okay. Cool. Meeting. What meeting? Uh -huh. I don't know anything about a meeting. You know what I mean? So next thing you know, I show up at a meeting. The script is there and everything. Like, what the? Just like that. No email, nothing because I'm there. You know what I mean? So they didn't have to remember, uh, you know, oh, Pascal is a good for this role. No, I'm already there. You understand? So, um, the networking part is most very, very important. Very important. Very, very, important. Very, very important. Very important. It's part of your job as an actor. Yeah. Um, and also, um, you creating your own content mm -hmm. is a must. Yeah. 80% of content creators in America, those who do skits, these mm -hmm. are aspiring mm -hmm. actors that are getting jobs. Now they make so much money on YouTube. Yeah. Now they, they, they create their own content. They don't need to be casted in anywhere. You know, it's so easy to create your own content and make money from it. From it. You don't need me. You understand? It gets to a point where I will be the one chasing you. Exactly. You understand? So you increase your value, that's all. Yeah. Ghana Weekend TV, we're having a very good conversation here with Pascal Aka. He's a filmmaker and award-winning Pascal Aka. He's one of our 15 and 17 awards in total. Yes, um, Ghana Movie Awards, Golden Movie Awards, MVCAs, and some other international awards. And he's here today speaking to us about Ghana's uh, film industry. Now, after producing the, the films and all that, we need to market them, yeah. to distribute them. Yeah. Do we have distribution avenues as Ghanaian filmmakers? Do, do we have that? The distribution is not here in Ghana. Uh, so um, we have to shop it to distributors outside Ghana. Mm -hmm. like my distributor is in South Africa. Okay. Um, um, yeah, my distributor is in South Africa. And the money that we make, most of the money that I make is outside, outside Ghana. You know, so there's right now the um, National Film Authority are really um, pushing um, the cinema culture uh, yeah. of, of, of Ghana. And in December, they have something big coming up. Um, the I don't meta know. Cinema? The Meta Cinema is coming in November. Okay, that's it's the, the Meta Cinema Forum is coming in November and it's going to be very fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could give you the date, but you can write it down. Write yeah, down I down. think I think I need yeah. a story. So, I need a story um, about it. Sir. Um, it's yeah. something that I really commend them and mm -hmm. it's going to be a forum. I'm going to be there. Okay. And um, okay. a lot of stakeholders in Ghana and yeah. internationally are going to show up and just hopefully help push the cinema agenda of 
the country, in the country, in, in West Africa, because the Nigerian film industry has exploded very much in the past few years because mm -hmm. they didn't, they expanded their cinema culture. Yeah. If you release your film, you have about 70 something cinemas within the country to distribute your film and you will make your money. So people okay. in the North, East, West, South, can watch your film. So from 21st to 23rd November, mm -hmm. the Africa Meta Cinema Forum mm -hmm. uh, will be taking place in Ghana. Yeah, so so how, how do you see the NFA's activities, you know, since it was put together, established? Very good question. The National Film Authorities, I, I, I believe the National Film Authorities' um, performance has been exactly what I expect. Okay. In, in this industry that, you know, was ve is very, very ailing. They've, they're doing a very good job with branding Ghana uh, as the gateway to tourism in Africa. Okay. They're, they're very good. They're doing a very good job with you know uh, showing the potential of Ghana using statistics, using visuals, etc., and using connection uh, locally and internationally, and also bringing us together, us filmmakers together, uh, in order to help make that happen. So I really commend uh, Mr. Jeta Santi and everybody else in uh, the National Film Authority. I think they're doing a fantastic job, and I'm there to support. Has has the cinema culture gotten better um well first of all the pandemic did not help okay the pandemic did not help but um i think the really the first step into making that happen will start in november and december okay you know i mean that's really before they had um uh, a, a, a program where there was funding for for a film so yeah. they really they rest uh, started that yeah. and they really helped put yeah, together the, a film the presidential film pitch series yes yeah the, the, the pitch yeah. series so they told me that that was sort of my idea I mean, that's something, something I kept pitching to National Film Authority and oh, before, okay. you know, I, I, they, told, they told me on the phone that you sort of my idea as well. I wasn't there. I wasn't able to be there physically, but yeah. then I think that's a good first step. Yeah. Um, so, but when it, comes to, when it comes to the cinema culture, I really think that's one way to improve our mm -hmm. industry. And mm -hmm. in November, the Meta Forum and also the event they have in December, they're going to have um, multiple films showcasing all over the country. Yeah multiple venues, not necessarily cinemas, but other venues that can work as cinemas in the meantime. Uh, Gold Coast Lounge, my movie, is going to play as well. Oh, cool. So those, yeah. again, who are not able to watch the film, um, will be able to watch it over there. Um, but anyways, I never announced it, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, Gold Coast Lounge is actually available on Prime Video, uh -huh, Amazon Prime Video. <laughs> you know, people think that, okay, do we need to go for a premiere or for, for a cinema show before we can watch it? I never announced it, but yeah, it's been there Please for Please do while. that again. Say it again. Okay, my movie, Gold Coast Lounge, is available to stream on Amazon Prime Video. Exactly. Yay. So go watch it. It's a very nice movie. Very, very nice movie. Yes. Yeah. So Pascal Aka is right here with us. But let's talk a bit about your other talents. Okay. N now, why why did you choose to do your own scoring? Come and hire me in. Okay. Now, um, first of all, something that I studied. Um, oh, you studied scoring? Yes, specifically wow. in Canada. And even two years ago, I was go they were going to fly me to the, um, for a program for the National um, hey, London Film. Hey, I forgot the name, Don't but worry. I couldn't go because of the pandemic, I couldn't go. Okay. It was for, it's a program for residency for scoring, okay. but I could not go. But um, music, right? Hmm. Before I touched the camera, um, I had a microphone and I had a keyboard. So let's say when I was 15 to 16 years old, yeah. Um, I was a, I was making music. Wow. I, was, I really really wanted to pursue music, rapping and uh, the music production. You were a rapper. Yes, I was. So when I went to Canada, when I came back the first time, let's say in 2004 or so, I had a demo, a six song demo, EP, whatever. Someone hooked me up with Hammer from the last two. Okay. So I was with Hammer for the last two for the whole summer of 2004. Uh, he looked to listen to my EP. He loved it very, very, very much. No, no joking, especially the first track, whatever. So um, from there, he made me record a track. Um, at the time, it was called Across Finance. For, that was for his, um, one of the last two compilation oh, albums. Compilation, sorry. I believe that album got destroyed because there was a fire. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but in the song... The Your song was on that? Um, it was a, part of that? Multiple rappers multiple. were in the song. Okay, there was okay, just okay. one song with multiple English rappers. Okay, I get it. So there was me, Colossus, that was my rap name. Uh, D Black told me that it was actually in the song. I didn't oh, know okay. him back then, but about 10 years later, I revealed, yes, he was in the song. That was his first song. Um, I think Blitz, uh, the ambassador, was in there. Okay. By that time, it was called Bazaar. Bazaar, Bazaar. And, and um, yeah, but that song it never came out. Uh, the, the album never came out. But uh, Bahama, at the time, he told me, um, what am I studying in Canada? I was like, yeah, I said, I study film. Mm -hmm. Then he mm -hmm. told me, mm -hmm. I'll never forget. 
and then, then Colossus. Then you go to Canada, finish your studies, and when you finish, come back Whoa. with music videos and you take over. That's Whoa. what he told me, and I never forgot. Because at the time, there was Abraham Ohenija, someone mm, that I respect mm, and mm. we idolized back then. Uh, he said Abraham Ohenija is their only director right now. So I went to Canada, came back about eight years later. Um, and yeah, so I, the director of music videos in 2012 was, was, was a good big year of music videos. So the music, right? The actual music side of me. Um, gradually, the rapping stopped and then the production stopped. Yeah. But when I grabbed the camera in 2005 and I started making movies, I uh, started scoring my movies. Wow. So all the movies that I did in Canada, I scored it. I, I, I did a scoring for it. Um, I, was, I was trained and mentored by music composers over there wow. and stuff. And yeah, so again, when I came back to Ghana, back and forth. But when I did a movie, Go Coast Lounge, that's yeah, when I yeah, really, yeah, really, yeah. really, really, really uh, took my music to the whole new level by, by scoring. So what happened is basically, yes, I studied film music, but then what makes this interesting is that I'm really incorporating a traditional sound into it. So my journey with this music thing, film music thing, is to actually have that cinematic, international cinematic mm -hmm. sound, mm -hmm. film mm -hmm. sound, with our African culture in there. Oh, okay. Because our African culture is really storytelling based. The talking drum alone, it's not just an instrument to just tell a story. Every other instrument tells a story. Uh, I saw that video you sent, you know, the, the guys were playing the yes. tumpine and all that. Yes, yes. So every time that I have a film or whatever, I record those guys for hours and hours. And I use the sound, I incorporate it into my film, mixed up with all my other strings and all the, all the, all the um, orchestral sounds and stuff. And once I created that uh, with Gokos Lounge, the movie won 18 awards, but four of those awards were for the soundtrack. Oh, so good. every time we get nominated for soundtrack, we soundtrack. always win. So Ghana Movie Awards, we won soundtrack. Yeah. Go to yeah. Movie Awards soundtrack. Africa Movie Academy Awards, we won Best Soundtrack. And also EMVCA sure. this year, we won Best Soundtrack. So um, when it comes to soundtrack, we're undefeated, <laughs> I guess. Well, when it comes to soundtrack. Um, so the, mu the music making is a very big part of my movie creating process. So, so if I finish script writing for my next movie, which I have, I also finished creating the music as well. So the soundtrack for my next movie is already done. And I, 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 I want to tell you the title of your next movie. I won't tell you. Oh, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that I will write this film. Okay, Pascal Aka to release yeah. a new film titled. Or somebody will steal it. I won't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I won't tell you. When is it coming out? Um, it's not been done yet. Why not? We're, we're looking for okay. um, we look for a lot of money. We look for a proper financing. A lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like how much? I, I won't lie to you. I mean, it takes making films is it's expensive. Or it's not like making music where you like, can do like it by yourself. Oh, half a million. Half a million. Yeah. Half a million Ghana cities no, or dollars. No, 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 dollars. Dollars. Yeah, dollars. Half a million dollars. Yeah. Investors, you are watching us. We need money. You. We need money. We need money. <laughs> All right, Ghana Weekend TV. I'm here with Pascal Aka. He's a Ghanaian filmmaker, he's an actor, he's a script writer, he's a music scorer, he's everything, plenty. Do you, do you play football? No. I thought you were going to ask me about basketball. Basket but no. Okay, basketball. No, the you, don't no. Do, you don't do any of this. Uh, no, not really. It's my oh, brother, okay. my, my older brother, I used to play basketball. Um, he was a big star in GIS back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out to JP. Yeah. yeah. No, okay, so have you received any of your plaques yet? Those of you who, who award uh, creatives and you don't give them plaques, they will call you on stage and they will give you the plaque like this. Photo, crack, crack, then they take it away from you. 10 years, crack, no plaque. Charlie, why you do that? Because this man, he go Niger, no? MVCA, then give him plaque like this, he take him Ghana, zzz, like this, plus money, plus one million naira. Ghana, a, a movie I was. More the plaque, number no much golden movie I was. You take the plug give, then you collect them. Why? Where the plus day? Eh, eh, Mimi and uh, uh, Fred Nyama. Where, where then they? I, I talk give you. What can say? You talk sir. So, man, keep you. I didn't say anything, boss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see, you see. I know how you've you've um, spoken about this over the years, yeah, yeah. almost every time. But it appears, you know, people don't want to change. <laughs> They don't, they don't want to change. I mean, but I did say, you know, it's not to embarrass anyone. Um, and if they don't, you know, do the right thing, um, rectify the issue, we move on. We move. We're moving. We move. Actually, yes, we're moving. Do you have anything to tell, you know, your, your fans out there, movie uh, fanatics out there who are watching you right now? 
What do you have to say? Um, to the creatives, the people that want to be creatives, whether you're a director, screenwriter, actor, uh, all, all those things. Me, uh, I'm just a guy that I know there's a voice that speaks to me that says, do this, do this, do this. Um, that voice is your assignment, you know, and listen to that voice. Ghana Weekend TV, my name is Kwa Medazi. Uh, great having Pascal Aka here. Uh, go and watch Gold Coast Lounge.